So the housing markets have come down from their dizzying heights and your home's not selling. And there are more houses listed for sale than you can remember seeing since 2008. So it's 2008 all over again, right? Well, not exactly. And in this video, I'm going to explain why this correction or crash is completely different from 2008. So I actually got into real estate investing during the 2008 crash. I sold a home at the peak and then bought a home at the peak. And since then, I've realized, hey, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to get into real estate investing because of the low prices that came out of that crash. So I've been doing this for about 14 years now, and it's not my first rodeo. This crash is certainly a correction. I wouldn't say it's as bad as 2008, at least not yet. And so in this video, I'm going to explain why that's the case and what exactly is different. If you were to wrap the 2008 financial crisis up into a tiny, tiny package, it would be this. Out of good intentions, the government wanted to enable more people to participate in home ownership. And so they loosened lending standards. And then the banks really ran with that and gave people loans that really they shouldn't have gotten with almost no equity. And then all of those loans got lumped up into mortgage-backed securities and then traded on the markets like they were A-rated bonds. And in fact, they weren't A-rated at all. They were much, much worse, really kind of junk bonds, but they were being traded as A. And so once that reality came to the surface, everything popped. Once that risk came out and those loans stopped performing, then the collapse occurred and we had all the big banks fail like Washington Mutual, AIG, and Lehman Brothers to name a few. But if you look at housing prices, we peaked in 2006 and during the actual crisis in 2008, we had about a 15% drop in prices. And then we bottomed out at the end of 2012 with about a 27% drop. Now that took six years to fully unwind. But even in there, we had some cycles where prices went down in the winter and then came back up in the spring. Now keep in mind, from 1991 to 2006, we had a 15 year market of increasing prices. As you can see, we're coming off a new peak in June of 2022. Those gray bands are recessions and we're likely to start a new one, but three out of four of them didn't do much to housing prices. So the question is, will this time be like 2008 or different? Okay, well let's start off with what's the same. This time around, we peaked at about 10 months of housing inventory nationally. Now in 2008, we had a 12 month inventory, so we didn't quite reach the same high as we did then. So ostensibly it's not as bad, right? Also today, mortgage rates are about what they were in 2008, somewhere around 6%. So before we get into what's different, what do you think is gonna happen in the housing market in 2023 and why? I would love to know in the comments below. Okay, so let's talk about what's different. Now, I said before that the peak inventory was about the same, but this time it is technically lower. Now, markets are always local, and there were 5,500 listings in all of Austin in 2008, and that was about a five-month supply. While today, there are only 2,200 listing, but also about a five-month supply because there are a lot fewer buyers now than there were in 2008, if you can believe that. Now we also have a lot more equity in homes than we had in 2008, which was a big problem because people were willing to walk away from their homes in 2008. But today you've actually got some money at risk. So people are less likely to sell at fire sale prices because they've got something to lose. Lending standards are also tighter than they were in 2008. Back then you could get a loan very easily. And today that's still a lot harder. And again, more equity is required. This time around, we certainly have potentially much higher inflation, which we didn't have in 2008. Mortgage rates this time around are actually on their way up most likely, whereas last time they were on their way down. In 2008, we had not come off of a stimulus package. In fact, stimulus started after that crisis. And now we've just finished a stimulation series and we're coming off of that. So we're like getting off of the sugar high. And this time around, we have more investor owners, although that is falling. So last time prices went down mainly because we had so much inventory. People were willing to walk away from their homes and that put a lot of stuff on the market. And so prices had to come down because you just had too much competition. Now we kind of have the reverse problem. We actually have an okay amount of inventory. It's not that much, but just buyers can't buy because prices are high. However, sellers weren't forced to sell like they were before because their notes were due and the banks were foreclosing on their homes. So they had to sell. So everything got listed whether they liked it or not. Today, there's some equity. So sellers are going, uh, I really don't want to sell my house at that price. I'll wait. And so that's going to make this whole thing crash a lot slower than it did before because you just don't have that massive amount of inventory from desperate people coming up really, really fast. 
I think we're certainly in the age of a much more volatile market, even for housing prices. Typically, housing doesn't move that quick, but because we had the big upswing during COVID, we're having a big downswing, at least in 2022. And so that ripple effect is going to shrink and the highs are going to be lower and the lows are going to be higher until we get back to a kind of a normal market. But whenever you come off of a big boom, you're going to have a bust. And so we just have to go through that. To me, the biggest risk of housing prices having a more dramatic fall is actually in the stock market. And the reason being is that if the stock market were to take a precipitous fall, that would make people feel much less wealthy. It would be the inverse of the wealth effect. And in that case, people's wealth would just be left in their homes. And they would think like, well, my portfolio is trash, but at least my home has some value. And so then it might bring more desperate sellers to the market willing to take more of a discount on their home so that they could tap it for some equity. Now, whether they tap it with loans or actually sell the home, yet to be seen. But a stock market collapse to me is much more possible simply because it's a more volatile and uncertain market. And right now with all of the printing going on and the fact that companies have lower earnings and they're having to do um, labor layoffs in order to make it through the next cycle, if they can manage to do that gracefully, shouldn't be a problem. But if for some reason there's a big sell-off, then I think that could trickle into the housing market. But in that case, it would be much more of a economic problem as a whole instead of something just specific and then everything's going to go on sale. Now I couldn't tell you exactly what would cause that type of crash to occur, but to me that's where the greatest risk is and again it's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. So if you think the housing market's going to crash, I made a video about the top three markets in the United States that I think are most susceptible to a crash. You can check that guy out over here and let me know what you think. Am I right or am I wrong? Thanks for watching. May you invest wisely and we'll see you next time.